88-year-old Reverend Mel Jackson's first words to Dr. King were, well, memorable. It's what I told him. I thought he was a wimp. I thought he should be ashamed of himself, uh, leading people to get uh, beat upside the head and, and, and all that sort of thing. And uh, King was such a patient man, and uh, he, he wasn't ruffled. You see, Jackson was 35 at the time and had recently gotten out of the military. Soon after, Jackson left his home in Dayton, Ohio, and traveled the Midwest, organizing his own civil rights demonstrations at factories and business offices. Jackson says Dr. King told him about something different, fundamentally changing how the nation's system operates. It helped me to understand and to read more, to think more, to plan with more people, to really get a grip on the whole idea of institutional change. Fast forward to 1968, Memphis, Tennessee. Reverend Jackson marked with Dr. King demanding racial equality. That's when Dr. King told Jackson something that completely changed his philosophy. He said, living, uh, if a man doesn't have anything to die for, he really is not fit to live. And boy, that gripped me. He said, now I'm willing to die for people that I love. He said, Christ died for all of us. And uh, the guy had me with, with tears in my eye. Dr. King told him something else profound. I know that I'm going to die. I don't know when. He said, but if dying is to help people to live, he said, uh, yesterday, tomorrow won't be too soon. That tragedy came true April 4th, 1968, the day Dr. King was assassinated at Memphis's Lorraine Motel. Jackson's buddy broke the news to him in Chicago. He said, Martin Luther King is dead. And all hell broke loose that night in, on the west side of Chicago. President Lyndon Johnson called King the apostle of nonviolence. I'm sure that the meeting with King and his attitude toward humanity with disregard to what a person looks like or what their conditions are, that uh, love really uh, has no barriers. 50 years later, Dr. King's words, Jackson says, still resonate hope.